Hey, Matthias Nygaard. I'm from Turisas. We're a Finnish folk metal band, I guess they call us. And we have a lot of historical influence in our lyrics and our, our albums, so yeah, music. And how you use history effects in your band and in your song? How? Yeah. Um, we've done albums that have, like the whole album is a historical concept album. Some, some are more like track by track things, but for instance, our 2007 release, The Varangian Way, was a historical concept album about the kind of Vikings or, or Northmen who traveled east down the, the kind of Russian river route network towards Constantinople, the kind of grand capital of the world at that time, and, and ended up there as mercenaries known as the Varangian Guard. So that album kind of was part of the trip, and the follow-up album Stand Up and Fight in 2011 was more dealing with the, the, the time and idea of this kind of mercenary troop in, in a Byzantine empire and their time there. And you talked about this subject through your lyrics or through the cover of your album? Well, both, I suppose, but I think, of course, the lyrics are the, the driving force. But of course, it's also the way we write music is not really like guitar riff and just put some text on top. It's more like the kind of very visual way of writing music. So I think some tracks you can kind of like hear the the narrative in the music itself. Like for instance, the Dnieper Rapids on, on the Baranjan Way is about the kind of like very dangerous rapids in the river they had to pass and it has a very kind of like, uh, the atmosphere of the song is kind of working with that strongly. So. And all your album you talked about war. Um, the story is just war? I don't think war, I think that's been kind of like greatly exaggerated how much we deal with war. I mean, the Varangian Way is more like a, 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 jur a journey, I, I suppose. And, uh, and of course, battles and, and stuff like this has, is part of history. But, but to me, the more interesting is the perspective of a, of a single person. I usually write from the first persona. So it's more, more about how one person feels within some, uh, some kind of historical uh, relationship rather than just speaking about history as a general thing, you know. Because I think that's what's interesting, like people have still felt and had their same kind of hopes and dreams and, you know, feelings and emotions a thousand years ago as today. So that's kind of the, our connection, in, in how I see it at least. That You we can reinterpret uh, the, the history, it's uh, a, a romantic book. Way to talk about the story? I think uh, we are very, very aware of the kind of romantic pitfalls of, of history, especially in popular culture, and uh, in a way try to stay away from it and avoid it, but on the other hand, also sometimes play with it, like on purpose, kind of exaggerate things and make it very kind of uh, also like on. I think some of our songs, some of our topics deal with the writing of history itself, which is of course a very interesting subject about like, uh, you know, how subjective the idea of history generally is and, and that kind of thing. I think that's a very strong part of our lyrics as well. And I think some bands that, that have some kind of historical connection in their music are more kind of uh, occupied with, with telling a good story and, and keeping to that where for us it's more kind of like maybe I would like to say a broader view view of the thing. And do you think people can learn something about your song and about history through your song? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think a lot of people have have been interested about subjects we bring up and uh, and for me, it's always like, even if we have a historical context, it's more like a framework. And I think in the end, it usually, the songs are, in, if you get to the very bottom of them, they are usually about things that are happening today, more kind of contemporary themes. So I think that is what makes people be able to relate to it. If it's just kind, some kind of mythical, uh, you know, fairy tale, it's, it might be kind of fun and entertaining, but it doesn't really give you anything. And I think, that's, that's the thing I want to kind of focus on is that it needs to have a point why you are singing about, you know, we have a song called Hunting Pirates. It's a very kind of on purpose carnivalized song in a way. 
and it's playing with this kind of like modern pirate idea and and that kind of pop culture pirate idea even if if it's kind of dealing more with the kind of uh, morale of who who is considered a you know pirate and and how or stealing when you you take it to to a national level or whatever like big armies and what they do and, and how they operate so so I think it's always like this play of of taking some things like a little bit over the top and sometimes people get it and sometimes people misinterpret it and, and take things at face value and uh, you know it's just the way we, we like to do it and um, in new music and in, in metal in general um, why do you believe there is a need to talk about history and in general uh, of our ancestors um, I think that that subject of, of history and history the writing of history is is important because I think a lot of people easily have an idea that history is something that's been like carved in stone and it's like the full truth and 100% truth and don't really question like everything that you know about the past being kind of filtered out by someone's you know emphasizing their own agenda or, or whatever it's not like I I don't want to bring out some kind of like conspiracy, conspiracy the theory kind of angle to things but but more like to try to to find a broader idea of, of things and not just um, believe the first thing you read on Wikipedia as such you know and uh, and history when you simplify it and simplify it to to fit in a simple Wikipedia article or to sip in a simple I don't know book about Vikings it's of course you have to narrow things down and simplify things so much that sometimes like if, if that's everything you you read it's it um, you might not really have a very good idea of the whole subject and that's why for me even if I don't have like this kind of like university studies behind me in this subject myself I think I've probably read my fair share of of very kind of like up there kind of like uh, how do you say like uh, real uh, doctoral thesis or, or this kind of like studies on on, on history and, and subjects myself um, you you write uh, alone or is collaborative work uh, sorry you, you uh, uh, write uh, alone or is a collaborative work for uh, write songs and uh, find uh, the idea or the documentation I think the idea and the concepts always come from me and then the music I, I write all the lyrics for instance but um, I think the music is is we collaborate in the way that I still maybe do 80%, 85%, but it's open to everyone to, to put in ideas. And usually the further down the process we get, I have a better idea that I need something like this vibe and I can put out an example. I need something like this to work with this theme or this narrative. or And then I can ask for people to, to really bring some musical ideas to, to the table and I can kind of build it up from there. So it is teamwork, but it's still kind of like I'm the kind of one who oversees the whole process. So I'm more like a kind of director in that way. And uh, and I'm happy to have that kind of, we have a very broad musical background, everyone. So, you know, where my weak points are, somebody else is great at doing some like really good guitar riffs and I don't really play the guitar that well. So my kind of metal riffs are really bad and suck so I can ask Jussi to, to give me like a very cool guitar riff when I need one. So. And do you think uh, metal uh, already, uh, always be uh, a part of metal or is uh, new? That what is part of it? Uh, metal is new or at the beginning of the metal uh, bands talk uh, already of history? Well, if you think of like Black Sabbath, for instance, you know, going back to the kind of very early roots of, of metal. Um, I guess there are things where when it wasn't about drugs, it was more about, you know, more contemporary issues, war pigs, for instance, what was going on. But I, I think, you know, in the end, when you look at it, like those wars they were writing about in the, the change of 60s, early 70s are the history of today. 
So of course, like whenever you write about something contemporary, I think it kind of includes that you are also talking about history, if not history at that that time, it's going to be history of tomorrow. So it definitely has that angle to it. Then later on, if you look at, I don't know, um, Dio or Rainbow or or this kind of stuff, I think that was more like they brought the whole fairy tale thing to it and that kind of like thing. And those kind of go hand in hand and, and sometimes you know the 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 more fairy tale thing with with fairies and trolls seem a bit nonsensy to those who are more down towards the the history side but i think for us it's kind of like a little bit of both i can't deny that our influence in like the old classic metal bands like iron maiden or something has a good good amount of like fantasy in them of course and and we've been influenced by by those as well so yeah yeah but well, for me, it seems to um, the bands actually um, talk deeply about history, in my opinion. Yeah. Zan, uh, Black Sabbath, or what else? What else? Groups. Mm. It's very amazing to see uh, all the literature. And um, do you think um, there are a lot of uh, country in Africa, India, and um, come to this country and, and talk about uh, uh, history. Uh, there. History. So you mean like like a metal band from, I don't know, say, say Brazil, that have like a Brazilian influence to them or talk about Brazilian? I think, that, well, Sepultura is a great example already and uh, I think there are others from Brazil. There's Angra. I don't know really what their music is about, but I think they're the their own culture of course influence what they do but i think sometimes the other way around when you have um, a band say from italy that wants to write about vikings sometimes i see like you get this kind of weird oppression from fans that they say like hey you're from that country you can't be interested in this topic and you can't write about that and i think that is kind of like very false because you know no one me i don't have like because I'm born in, in Finland in, in the 80s, I don't have some kind of ownership to, to the Finnish culture in a thousand years ago any more than you have. So people have moved and, and moved around and I think people anchor themselves their selves a little bit too much in that kind of nationalistic idea of their own country and their own like, history. And, and if you cross the border, you can talk about their, their other history. I have a, you know, our albums, a lot of them dealt with the Byzantine Empire and, and has, of course, a, a Greek and a Turkish influence to them. I don't, that I know of, I don't have any kind of like genetic connection to that, but I'm, I'm into it, I've been interested in it, I've read up on it, I want to write about it and I, I can write music about it, you know. So for me, if a band from India wants to write about Vikings, I think, you know, no one can really claim or that's what even in politics, that's what people always want to do. They want to claim ownership to to something in the past because of some kind of nationalistic idea they have at this present moment. And I think that is false and dangerous. And I think people should just appreciate that, that there are so many different interesting cultures and if interesting histories and anyone is kind of free to, to be influenced. <laughs>